big fish. so bad. That's why you want glass or composite rods. Graphite just can't handle this. It's a big one. Oh, he's going back the other way. Come on. I want to win. I want to win. Blow some bubbles, buddy. Give it up, the ghost. Yes. I don't know if I'm gaining him up or not. I see something coming up on the fish finder. Yes. Oh, I think I'm winning now. Yeah, wait, there's bubbles. That's what I like to see, his bubbles. Oh. He's still blowing bubbles, though. That's usually the sign that... I've got the upper hand. Oh yeah, it'll be big bubbles. This is gonna be oh my god, this is a huge fish. Yes. Woo. Oh. That's a big one. Ugh. Come on, buddy. All right. That's easily five, six foot. Bring him up here. There we go. That's a beast. Wow, that's awesome. That's a cool fish. I'd say it's about five feet. There he goes. Alright. 
<laughs> these things are amazing, these fish. <sighs> that jump was off camera, but he came all the way out of the water over here on the side. So these Columbia River white sturgeon tuck into the Willamette River during the winter time up into this industrial basin where there's no current. And they stack in here by the hundreds. Oh, whoa. Cutting through fish there. Uh, partly because it's a little bit warmer in here, but also they heat these uh, dry docks in the wintertime while they're repairing ships. And those sturgeon like to sit underneath those warm dry docks. Oh. It's a great fishery for the kayak angler because it's right in the middle of the city and there's really no current to deal with. It's pretty stagnant water in here. There's some tidal influence, but it's just an awesome fishery to do. But you definitely need to be geared up with the right gear. So, um, you know, don't, don't bring undersized gear out here because it's snaggy. These fish are very large and powerful. So I'm running 100 pound braid mainline and 80 pound, 80 pound Dacron leader. And the reason I run Dacron leader rather than braid leader, um, or just straight braid, so the braid can cut up these sturgeon. They like to roll up inside the line a little bit sometimes. That Dacron's just a little easier on there. Uh, on there, it's not going to cut their flesh or anything. This is a catch and release fishery and it's in a really bizarre location just right in this industrial heart of the city and uh, yeah it's definitely not the most scenic but it's a really unique and amazing fishery. And there's fish in here that are you know seven eight feet long several hundred pounds very old fish too so that's why I like having the heavy gear just so I can minimize the length of these fights I mean you can expect uh, the fight on a big fish could take 45 minutes um, if you don't have the right size gear it could take a lot longer and it can stress those fish out the key is once you get them off the bottom and you can keep them off the bottom you start winning the fight because they'll be dragging you around, tiring themselves out. <sighs> He's pretty much taken back everything I gain on him here. <sighs> He's blowing bubbles. When you see him blow bubbles, that means you're winning. <sighs> that means that they're at the end of their fight. This is a barbless hook fishery for easy release. Lots of bubbles coming up. Should see them anytime now. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. There we go. It's a nice one. Gorgeous fish. So if they're over four and a half feet in length, you can't take them out of the water by law. Um, so you just kind of bring them up the side when you get a big fish like this. And you can just grab them by the mouth. They have a big rubbery mouth. Come here, come here, come here. They have a big tube mouth they use for hoovering up food off the bottom. Uh, but they're super cool. I'm gonna leave this fish in the water because I need to. But all I do is take the barbless hook, reach down here, and just pop it out. 
Get my finger in there. Oh, come on. Come on. There he goes. Whew. A few of those big ones you get tired out pretty fast. So all I use here is, like I said, a 100 pound main line. I have a sliding weight. I can clip in out cannonballs, heavy duty swivel, 24, 30 inch leader down to a four or five aught barbless hook. And I've been using herring this morning, but I only get nibbles and I switched out to squid and uh, got a more aggressive take there. You'll never know what really is going to be the top bait for the day. So, you know, bring herring, bring squid, smelt, sand shrimp, a variety of baits to uh, try. It's basically glorified catfishing. Once you do, you just drop it down to the bottom. I kind of bounce it out of the mud a little bit and then you just let it sit there. But you got to let them chew on it until they like to just kind of hoover it up and out of their mouth a few times, taste it, see if that's what they really want. And uh, then you can just swing away. Every once in a while you'll feel fish kind of rub up against the line as they're swimming around underneath you. It's very different from a bite. The bite is really light, like a trout, like a big catfish bite. Just kind of a tap, 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 tap. Oh, got him. Must be a little one. So the rod I'm using is a medium heavy technium rod. This is actually a Shimano rod composite uh, designed for Fraser River sturgeon fisheries. But you want a good medium heavy rod. Yeah, it's just a little guy. A longer rod kind of helps leverage those fish up off the bottom. And then you want a decent reel. Now I'm using an, uh, Avit. So this is really a pretty dialed in sturgeon rod, but you can use like a heavy duty salmon rod. Like here I have just a TDR, which is like a $30 medium heavy glass rod with a salmon reel on it with 50 pound braid. That's more than enough to handle most of the fish in this fishery. Let's take a look at this little guy. All right, come here, little guy. You gotta watch these little ones so they have sharp scoots. So you want to support them in two places, underneath the tail and underneath the pectoral fins. The little guys are squirrely. They have these sharp scoots down the side which can cut you. They have a little mouth that hoovers up all the food. Very cool looking fish though. All right, let's get this guy back before he cuts me up anymore in the hand. Got him. Not a giant like last time, which is okay. You only handle so many of those really big fish. Pull him up on the bottom there. It's probably a smaller fish, which is why it was pecking at it. Yep. Ah, oh, they're so pretty though. So you can see the sharp row of scoots that runs down the back of the sturgeon. They're very, very sharp. So you got to be careful with those. Pretty little fish. See that big sucker mouth? And they have all those sensors underneath the nose. Really spectacular. All right, look at this guy going. There he goes. 
Actually, look at that. I got somebody else's line on a sturgeon that had swallowed that line. <laughs> That's crazy. Didn't even hook him. This is somebody else who broke off a sturgeon in here. Looks like they were fishing 20 pound braid or something. It's crazy. I'll go ahead and cut this off down at the base there. Get him going. He's not dragging a string around. There he goes. I'll clean up some trash. There you go. Got him. Nice. So this fishery runs typically from the first big cold rains in October all the way until the spring runoff kind of runs off in April. And as the water temps come up, those fish will move back out into the main river system. But it's definitely worth doing. There's not a lot of opportunities for winter fishing anyways in the Northwest in the winter, but this is one of the coolest ones you can definitely do. And it's definitely worthwhile to come out here and chase some of these prehistoric white sturgeon. And you never know, you might connect with a 500 plus pound fish. I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And remember, Fish smarter, not harder. <laughs>